We're doing more science today. <laughs> All right, well, I am taking huge risk here, <laughs> but I am gonna to try to prove or disprove something. Uh, I don't know if I'll be successful or not, but we're gonna to try to, um, I'm gonna do two pours. I'm gonna do a pour that is sort of traditional, which you see uh, a lot of guys doing out on the uh, on YouTube here. You see uh, sort of the split mold pattern, uh, big sprue, big gates in and out. Um, maybe we may even do extension of the sprue higher. And then I'm gonna do this way that I've been trying and been doing and that we've been hearing about. If you if you ever listen to Martin over at Old Foundry Man, if you watch any of Bob Pohaka's uh, videos, this notion of a more controlled thing and getting, a, and getting less porosity, less turbulence, less badness in your casting. So we're gonna try both ways at the same time, same metal, same melt, same temperature, same everything. Only pouring is going to be the difference. So let's uh, let's get these things rammed up and see what we can do. All right, here's what we're going to do. We have um, I have two blocks that are basically identical, except one's got an A and one's got a B. The B I'm going to pour into the cope. Uh, the actually the top half of the A will be in the cope as well. We're going to do a split mold on that one. Uh, so I've got the bottom half here that we're going to put down um, like so. Now I'm going to go ahead and ram my my um, my um, my runner. Thank you, my runner into the um, into the pattern as well, because I want that down inside my um, my uh, drag. So put those two guys in there, and let's get it rammed up. I'm getting flipped over. And now we gotta do our cope. Get our key alignment in there. Now, my sprue is going to be down here in the corner. I've got a hole for alignment there, and I'm going to put a, um, a vent at the end of my runner as well, just so I don't have, a lot, I don't have any back pressure uh, on it. And we'll go ahead and put, we'll just go ahead and put that guy right there. I forgot, I forgot. We're going to put in, I forgot to do this. I've been so long since I've done anything like this. Sprue there. All right, well, hopefully we didn't, uh, <laughs> hopefully we didn't screw that up too bad by forgetting these guys. Uh, 
Uh, see if we can't find our screw. There it is. Lots of air pressure. <laughs> we'll need to turn that down. So we're going to cut our basin in now. Um, boy, I always like pouring. Duh. Let's do it over here. Part is right there. Boy. I didn't plan that very well. Didn't work, Martin. <laughs> Let's uh, open this thing up and see if we can get our parts out. Alrighty. Well, that's good. Okie dokie. Now the hard part. <laughs> this one will be the easiest one. Alright, that's the A. I see the A. It's goodness. There's the bottom half we're going to cut. Let's go ahead and do it while we're here. We're going to cut us a... a runner. Actually, this is yeah, it's a gate. You know what? While we're here, let's, why don't we cut us a basin, too? See that happen a lot. So we'll cut us a basin down here. And then we're going to cut us a gate into the into the part. Now I'm going to go ahead and try to pull it from down here at the vent end. We're almost there. <laughs> almost there. Well, we broke out some, but I don't care. Not about breakout. Got our vent, sprue, vent, everything's lined up there. And there we go. Let's melt some aluminum and pour it up. Sorry, right, well I almost forgot. <laughs> uh, I went ahead and put these pouring these extensions on for the uh, the sprue and the uh, vent. I went ahead and cut a not a great one, but I did cut a little bit of a funnel on that because that's what you're supposed to do, right? Funnel to help you pour. And we build them up, so we're now we're ready to go. We're now ready to melt. All right, here we go. Into the basin. And we're up through the sprue fence. Alright, here we go. Into the Basin. And we're up through the sprue fence. All 
All right, I'm going to do a little demonstration for you to just illustrate what we've just seen happen with the uh, with the pours. So I got a glass of water here. I've got an empty glass. Consider this my crucible. Consider this my big open sprue. Now when I pour water into this thing, I want you to watch two things. I want you to watch what happens to the water as it comes down, and I want you to watch what happens to the water when it hits the bottom. That was okay. Now let's talk about what we just saw. All right. First thing I want you to notice was when the water came out of there, let's, let's draw our sprue first. When the water came out of the crucible, what happened is, uh, and this happened when I did the pour as well, it kind of went all over the place because I wasn't, I didn't have my pour established yet. As it starts to flow down though, as I get the pour established, what you should have seen was the water coming out and sort of doing this, where it's wider at the top and getting narrower as it falls. And I, hopefully I have a still I can, I can superimpose. And that is because, as we all know now, um, if I need, if I'm, water is falling at a slower rate here, it takes less distance, to, or it takes wider, it has to be wider to contain a certain amount, a certain volume. As it falls faster, that volume gets spread out over more distance and it will narrow as it goes, as it gets following faster and faster. Now, what happened at the bottom of my basin? I had a big thing cut like this, right? Remember? It was like that. <clears throat> that metal came down here and you saw what happened with the glass. It, it bubbled and it bubbled. Here's the other thing that you did. I don't know if you paid attention, you can see it. This bubbling continued all the way up until this was full. This, this sprue is full. And the reason is, is because there's so much empty space in here. Now, when we do a tapered sprue, what we're doing is we're mimicking this shape right here, okay? And so as the water, as the metal flows through that thing, there won't be any of this stuff going on because this is full. If our running system is the same diameter here as, or the same, the same cross-sectional area, then the water, the metal should just flow right through here without doing any of this bubbling around. So that's what we saw happen. Um, let me get you back to the video. All righty. I guess we just uh, do that, right? Well, let's just look at this um, before I cut these things off. B is the tapered sprue with the basin. A is the big sprues. Let me go cut these things, the sprues off so I can look at them closer. All right, so the first thing, so let's just address this first thing first. Um, had I been pouring this to try to get an actual, like, good casting, uh, I would have put feeders on here to keep, to, to take care of the shrinkage because that's a big hunk of aluminum to just, like, cool. So you see it's shrunk. Both of them shrunk. Um, let's start by looking at the bottoms here. Let's see what we can see. So this one, keep in mind, this is the traditional YouTube kind of pour. Um, big sprue, tall sprue, big feeders. Um, I don't know that. Uh, I don't know that this is conclusive, but this because this could be sand. But um, I blew them both out exactly the same. You see that there's a lot of pores, a lot of little holes here uh, in the big sprue. I'm not seeing that with this guy here. Maybe a little bit right there, maybe around the edge. But on the bottom surface, they look pretty darn close. Let's look at the, uh, the gates coming in. So on this one, these, this was the, the end gate uh, on this guy, and then this is the end gate on this one. Maybe a little bit there. Again, this is a small sprue. Um, bubble there, bubble there, bubble there. Uh, I'm even chalk that up to the um, parting line, so we won't count that guy. Another hole right there. So that's on the input side. Now this one didn't have an output side because I vented out of the top. But let's look at the, uh, the vent side here on this guy. That's not a hole, that's a piece of dirt. <laughs> um, 
looks like we got a bubble there. We got a old bubble there for sure. Um, all kinds of stuff happening right above the uh, the out gate here. The out, yeah, the out gate. It shrunk in. Um, very defined line there. Like there was something possibly happening right there. Like I say, that's that's uh, dirt. And that's not that's not a hole either. So. Um, on the whole, I'm looking at here, I see a lot of little bitty things on this guy. I see a couple of things on this one as well, though. Um, so, okay, this is A and B again. A, another another hole right, right there. Uh, a couple of small ones right here. But if I look at all in all, this is the tiny sprue, this is the big sprue. All right, well, here is my take on the subject, and it is exactly like I thought it was going to turn out. Um, maybe not as defined as I hoped it would be, but it's still there. People ask me all the time, how do you degas your metal? How do you degas your metal? How do you degas your metal? I don't degas my metal. Um, if I want to try to get a pores, as porous free pour as I can get, I'm going to pour it the way I poured this guy, B. I can degas till the cows come home with my metal. Um, in the in the crucible, if I pour it down that big old hole, I'm going to get that A, right? A, <laughs> big old hole, porosity, control flow, not porous. Send your hate mail uh, to Martin over at. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. <laughs> that's just my experiment. That's what I showed. And that's what I found. I mean, I didn't set that up for failure. I just did it exactly the way I see it being done. So if you don't like it, I guess you can tell me, but you know what? B kind of speaks for itself. If I had a way of cutting these open without tearing them up so I could get a nice clean edge and we could see what was inside, I would do it. I don't have a good way of doing that. Try it for yourself. See what you get. See if you can't get a better pour. No. A better pour, <laughs> a bad pour, a good pour. <laughs> you guys have a great day.